Today on this old house, we're gonna repair some 19th century plaster. I believe this is made out of oyster shells. Oh, really? And today's challenge is rot. When you find a piece like this, does it stay or does it go? What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. This one right here is right on. Ooh, and the smell just changed. That's back on. Oh, lovely. Now it's your turn to save it for the next generation. <laughs> the money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Charleston, South Carolina, where we continue to make great progress on two projects that we are working on. Last week, we started the restoration work on the siding of our home in the Elliott Borough neighborhood. And this week, our homeowner, Judith, has a big decision to make. She's got to figure out what color to paint the exterior of her house. So I've decided to meet Judith and her designer at a part of town that they call Rainbow Row. This neighborhood got its name, as you can guess, from the house colors. Most of the 13 houses that make up Rainbow Row were built during the American Revolution, and now they are a must-see tourist attraction in Charleston. Hey, Taylor. Hey, Judith. Hey, hey, how are you? All right, a little chilly, a little cold snap in town today. You guys are bundled up appropriately. It is. So you live in a very colorful town. We do, absolutely. Charleston takes pride in that. The homeowners want their homes to be different. They want them to stand out. They want, to, want them to pop. Is that what you want, Judith? Absolutely. This is a great town, and this is a beautiful street. Rainbow Row here in Charleston is among the best in the world. This is a good place to start, but we also want something that's a little bolder. Okay. Absolutely. Um, More so. powerful, so it stands out. You know, she's got a lot of homes going up in her neighborhood, being changed, being renovated. We want to have something that makes Judith and Julia's home stand out. So if the past Pastels of Rainbow Row are not our inspiration. What should be our inspiration? I think we're going to take a trip and go take a look at a couple of houses and see some more bolder, brighter colors mm -hmm. and see if they uh, pique Judith's interest. Let's do it. Great. Okay, well, we've got a good example here of a brighter, bolder color in the teal house. And uh, unlike downtown, now we've got a wood house clapboards and sort of a similar size and scale to yours. Yes. What do you think? Actually, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it is in the Green family, which the house originally was with my grandparents when they were there. And it's almost Bermuda teal. The waters of Bermuda are almost this color. Uh, so it's fun. It's a fun green. Julia likes all things Bermuda. She does. <laughs> this is definitely a fun, fun pick. Thank okay. you. Absolutely. You're welcome. And we're going to go see another one that's going to be in the Green family as well. So this is an example of more of a traditional green with a great bright white trim, mm -hmm. but it still lets it be a bold color that mm -hmm. sets it apart mm -hmm. from the rest of the street. And so sort of in the olive family for the body? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And as you say, the bright white really sets it off. Judith, your thoughts? This is a beautiful house. Uh, the green reminds me of my grandparents' house. It was green as well. They had a black trim. I like the white a little bit better. Yeah, okay. Um, this is beautiful. It's conservative, but it's amazing. Well, I've got one more house up my sleeve, and we're going to go see that one next. All right, don't fall in love with anything yet, Judith. This is the boldest house on the tour. Mm -hmm. And I brought Judith here because I truly believe that the house needs to have a powerful, bold color. What, what color do you call that? I would call it a dark navy with some gray tones in it. OK. And, and Judith, bold and powerful? It Does that is work for all you? of those things. It's a magnificent color. Uh, I've never seen it before. I love unique. It's special. Um, and the white on it, of course, makes it pop out right? even more. I've never seen this color before, and I like that. It sounds like of the three that this may be your favorite. Is that this true? This would be my personal favorite. Uh, second, probably the teal, third, the conventional green. All lovely house colors. Mm. But this is different. I've never seen it before. So. Well, Absolutely. you have a little bit of time to think about it, but we do need a decision. And Taylor, thank you so much. Nothing You're like seeing welcome. it in person. No doubt. Very helpful. All right. Really does pop. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. 
Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. This house is in really bad shape. Termites and rot. It really was a problem and we can't tear it down, so we have to figure out how we can fix it. So if you look up here in the second floor in the front room, you can see the full dimensional two by four ceiling joists that run from the outside wall to outside wall. Now in this part of the house right here, we had the sister new two by tens along the side of the original two by fours and put a subfloor up there. The reason is above here is gonna be a heating and cooling system and we wanna make sure that the floor is structured strong so when the service person's up there, they don't fall through the ceiling. Also made an access hatch right here, so we'll put a pull down stair in so they can get up there easy to service the panel. As we walk towards the back of the house, it really gets worse. Now back here, they've replaced all of the ceiling joists with new two by tens. And you can see where the ends where they cut them off because they were so rotted. Now these two by tens, like the two by fours, go from one outside wall to the other outside wall. And they're actually there to carry the weight if somebody's up there, but they actually work under tension. So as the roof wants to push down, the side walls want to push out. By running them on the outside walls and fastening them the way they are, they can't push out. If you step back a little further, this is where the hole was in the roof. All of those boards were replaced. But in this section of the house back here, it was so rotted, we had to rebuild the whole thing. Remember the termites and the rot problem that we had downstairs? Let's take a look and see how they fixed that. This is the side of the house. We had all those termite problems and rot, and we had to deal with it. So we replaced the old sill with a new pressure treated eight by eight, and we cut off the two by fours that were rotted and didn't make it to the sill. To fix that problem, we now sister a new two by four against the side of the old two by four. It runs up to the ledger inside, all the way down to the new sill. We've had a lot of issues and problems with termites and rot, and dealing with them is always a challenge. Here in a Charleston single project, the homeowners really love the idea of these exposed brick walls, and they really look great, but you really don't have a chase to get the plumbing pipe down, as you can see it running right across the wall. Do you deal with this problem a lot, Mike? Quite often in these old homes, Tom. Yeah. Do you see any, uh, what other solutions do you have and what you're doing right now? Well, depending on the homeowners, but sometimes they'll have built-ins that will go all the way up to the ceiling. All the way up, yeah. crown molding on top. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then another option also is to run out soffit and then have crown that steps around. A plaster soffit with a big crown wall. Yes, yes. Well, I like the idea that you're building a fake beam. and You're making a chase for that pipe to come in, but where are you getting this wood? It's beautiful. Well, this is actually one of the bottoms. Uh, as you can see, it's half inch material. Yep. This is actually the back side. They can see the old saw marks right here where it was sawed in the mill probably. And if you look at the front, you can see where it was painted from originally. Being oh, on the wall. yeah, the old paint. Look, at that's probably where a, a molding went around. So this maybe was a paneling or something on a wall. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Over here is actually a piece of base. This is what we're making the front out of. And as you can see, it's got the original paint on the front. Yep. And when you turn it around, oh, yeah. it's got that rough look just like this does. That's, that's really, you get that cleaned up and that's what we have up there. Yes. Beautiful wood. Well, you got a few more pieces to go up. Can I give you a hand? Yes, you can. This is the bottom piece. Okay. I'm gonna line it up on my end. Yep. And we can only tack this because the plumbing still has to be inspected, so everything's oh, yeah. going to come down. All right, how's it look there? Uh, right there. I like that miter on the front edge. It makes the beam look like one solid beam. Yep. Okay, All right. Tack it down there. Yep. The next piece is this bottom piece right here. Okay. Got it. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Next move here is we're going to take these pieces and we're going to build a fake beam that looks like it comes out the wall and supports this front beam. Okay. Okay. All right, now we got to put on the end. Yeah. You good there? 
Yeah. All right, now you'll be able to see what I've done here. Okay. And as we nail it up, you see that I have the end grain going this way to mirror to match this. Yeah, so this looks like one solid block of wood. And on the face, we turned it back up this way, so yeah. it looks like the end grain of so a board. So you're fooling the eye. Yes. Nice job. All right, I'm tacking it? Yep. There you go. All right, that's it. You know, the fact that you didn't make the joints at that lap joint tight where the two beams meet really looks good. Yeah, you want to have the appearance that it looks like it's old, so obviously old wood wouldn't be tight right now. You're right. Nice job, Mike. All right, thanks, sir. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Here at the stairway leading to the new bedroom off the kitchen, Jared has been working on the stair treads, risers, and wainscoting. How's it going back here, Jared? Good. Just installing the last tread, Tom. All right. Getting ready to uh, install the nosing around nosing. the stairwell perimeter. Yeah, I can see that. You've got it all cut. You've got a nice round over edge here and you've slotted the back for a spline. That's right. Now you'll have to cut a slot or a dado here so that spline will fit in there and hold it into position. That's right. So that's really going to look good. You're going to hide the end grain nicely and by the time that's in and finished, that'll be flush with the floor. Yep. What do you want to do first? Uh, I want to route out the flooring to receive the spline and then install the nosing. All right, so I see you have a slot cutting bit in your router. Now this slot cutting bit is the same as you used on the nosing here so that that will match. It has a bearing to hold the depth and the height is set off the base so that when the two pieces come together, they'll be flush at the top. All right, I'll just get it started down here for you. All right, so you cut the splines out of the same material that the floor is made out of. Correct. All right, you've cut the width of the spline a little bit narrower than half the depth of the slot. So when it slides in, you'll have some room for glue on either side. That's right. All right, now we're ready to put the nosing on. A little bit of glue in the slot this time. Well, that was the easy one. Now yeah. we have to get this one in, tight to the miter, like that. Fits pretty good there? Yeah. Okay. So what we need to do now is we have to figure out how we can get this in and still get some spline in here somewhere. We're not going to be able to use the spline the whole way because of the brick, the angles of the brick, and the tightness of the miter. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to get this out. And then we'll put the, then we got to try to put the spline in. So I think we can only put a small section of spline in here. All right. Now we have our mark right there. Let's slide it in that. Also, I want to put some construction adhesive in this part. Okay, so now we can see if we can fight this in here a little bit. Got it. Let's see if I can, I can force it in a little bit. Right into that spine. All right. Okay, I 
can't slide that. Let me see if I can get the bar in here and push it down to you. You ready? Mm-hmm. How is it? Good. Is that it? Yep. We're tight. Perfect. You want to nail that off? Yep. All right. Looks really good. So, you get this nailed off, you have one piece of Scotia here, and the uh, stairway is really coming together. Yep. Nice job, Jared. Thank you, Tom. Here at our Charleston single house project, we talked a lot about the exposed bricks on the interior walls of the house. Now the plaster is still up in the foyer and the homeowners would really like to save it. So Mike, what do you have for challenges when saving this old plaster? Hey Tom, uh, the challenge with this particular house is that it's the original plaster. And the reason why we think that it's the original plaster is because we can see the sand and the lime that oh, yeah. actually makes up the original, uh, what we call a scratch coat. And what I've discovered is that not only in addition to animal hair, is that I believe this is made out of oyster shells. Oh, really? So it's not surprising being from Charleston and you see a bunch of oysters in your plaster. <laughs> so some of that oyster shell that you can see, is actually coming through here mm -hmm. in these little inclusions that you see on the plaster. Oh, yeah. And so what we'll do is we'll just take a bunch of this really rotted out plaster. Yeah, that's pretty loose. Out of the way. It is. So you'll cut that and drag that all out, clean we'll it away. Drag it all out, and then we'll clean it up a little bit. See how it just crumbles out? Yeah, that, I was just going to say, that's pretty soft. It just cuts right out. There's nothing holding it. Yeah. So now that I've removed all the loose material, let me show you on the other side. Okay. Yeah, so this is the hole that we were just looking at, mm -hmm. and you can tell that it's missing some of these keys. Yeah. The keys are what hold the plaster onto the wall. What you see is that this one is fairly loose. That key's broken. That key's broken, so yeah. automatically that wall is going to fail in that certain area. Mm -hmm. But it's nice and sturdy here. Mm -hmm. In other areas, you have it where the lath is so close that the plaster's not even coming through. Oh, so I that's see. not a very good connection. Right, so that plaster on the other side by here can fail real easy. Exactly, and so what we've done already is we've sprayed an emulsifying agent on there just to give it a little bit more tensile strength. And then what we'll do is we'll take a PVA, which is a, a polyvinyl acetate, basically a, a bonding agent. Yep. And then we'll just take this, mm -hmm. and we're just going to lightly apply Paint this the to the lath. And what that does is it serves as not only a bonding agent, but it also delays or retards the absorption of the water from the plaster into the wood, because that's what the wood wants to do. It wants to take in all that moisture. What we'll do next is we'll mix up a very similar mix to what, we've, what the original plaster was. Mm -hmm. Part sand, part lime, and a little bit of gauging plaster. No oyster shells? No oyster shells okay. this time. <laughs> a little harder to do this time yeah. around. Okay, throw that all in there. So you have a lot of time to work with this? You do until you add the gauging plaster. When you add the gauging plaster, then it starts to set up pretty quick. The great thing about this particular mix is that we're using hemp fiber instead of animal hair. It's a little bit easier to obtain. It's kind of hard to find yeah. animal fiber now. And now you're going to throw it on your hawk? You're going to throw it on the hawk. So you're laying that on pretty gently. I am laying it on gently. If I push it too hard, then we're going to push the existing keys that are strong. And damage those. And damage yeah. those, and we don't want to do that. And so what this is doing is this is going to bond all the broken keys back here that you can see. Oh, so the face of the broken key is going to bond to the new. It's going to bond to the new plaster. Yep. Smooth it out just a little bit. No yep. one's going to see this, so it doesn't need to be pretty. Okay. That burlap? It is burlap. You just and push we'll, it in there. We'll push it, gently push it against. This serves as an additional reinforcement and kind of keeps it all together. Yeah. So you're making a sandwich. Making a plaster burlap sandwich. Yep. What's next? Next, we will attack the front side. So now you're going to build that up and, uh, and bring it right flush with the wall, or are you going to do it in layers? 
because the original plaster is so thin, I can actually do this all in one layer, and it's such a small area. Mm -hmm. And then it'll take uh, probably a day to really set up before I can apply the finish coat. All right, well, that's going to be great. It's going to be lasting for a long time. At least another 170 years. <laughs> great. All right, well, I'm kind of hungry for oysters. Want to join agree. me? Let's all go. Right, let's go. This backyard may look like a disaster area right now, but in a few short weeks, it's going to be a finished landscape. And a big part of the landscape is going to be a pergola, which lands right about here. Now, that pergola is being built with the help of a local college, and Tommy's going to check it out. Hey, Bruno, what are you using here? We're using a pressure-treated southern yellow pine here because it's an outdoor structure. So it looks like you've got traditional mortise and tenon joints here. Yes, we do. We, uh, everything on this wall is actually traditional joinery. But to put it together, tenons here, peg holes have been drilled in the mortise but not in the tenons so that the idea is when we pre-assemble it, we mark those holes and then when we take it out, we draw a bow, we drill on an angle so it pulls it together when we assemble. We're about to ready to assemble this. So hope we'll get together well. Go this way with the post. Oh. Uh, too much. There you go. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It goes together beautifully. Nice fit. Okay, next, we're going to strap it. We're going to strap it, make sure it stays where we need it. Make sure the strap is not in the way of the pegs. Good? Yeah. Good? Yep. Uh, we're going to go hit with a three quarter inch bit in reverse. So it just marks where that peg hole is centered and then when we take it apart, then we can actually draw bow it. Now we're ready to take it apart. So we're kind of an angle like this halfway. Yep. And then as we're halfway, we straighten back out. Now we're gonna go on this one, same thing. We start on an angle. Yep. And when we're about halfway through the tenon, straighten over. out. Nice. So cleaning out the bottom where it blew out a little bit. And uh, it's good, it's all clean. Labeled everything so it goes back in the same spot. Now you cannot switch anything around anymore. Uh, it's ready to be shipped and assembled on site. All right, what do you get left to do? We have a few of those ends left to cut. So he's using a portable bandsaw. Yes, it's a portable bandsaw, so you can do some end profiles, and basically it has a table like a circular saw would have, and you just work the tool around the beam rather than the beam around the tool. I know they're always tricky. I use those a couple of times, and they can be tricky to use. Oh, that saw does a nice job. Yes, it does. All we have left now is sanding this off a few ribs, and then we have three more to cut. Then we have another wall to pre-assemble. It's ready to be shipped on site and be finished. Hey, hey how, bro, are you? how are you? Tommy? Good. Yeah, oh, that is, is looking great, huh? Pretty nice, yeah. This is eventually going to get painted, but next week, Bruno's going to show up on site with his guys, and they're going to assemble it for us. All right, well, looking forward to that. Yeah. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Bruno Soto. And I'm Tom Silva. For the Soul House here in Charleston. Next time on This Old House. All the hardscapes in, the plant materials almost all in and looking great. All right, well, I cannot wait to see it finished. Our kitchen cabinets have arrived on site, and Patrick, our installer, is starting to install them. And it looks like ductwork chaos, but it's all about being cool. It's time to build a table out of wood that was underwater for hundreds of years. This is magnificent. Notice how all the grain just really popped out. Look at this. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.